I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. The Lord be with you, and (laughs) and welcome as we gather for worship online. Right where you are, I invite you to create a space for worship. If you can find a candle, bring one near if you have your Bible, and you might even need your phone. Just trust me on that one. Um, While you're gathering those things, let me just share a few announcements. We did email out an announcement page. It's also there below the streaming um, video box. And... um, In the midst of these days, more and more people really want to know, what can we do? And there are things that we can do while safely doing our best to stay at home and keeping our distance. And one of those things is the one great hour of sharing offering. We do this every year on Palm Sunday, which is next week. And this is an offering that was created in the midst of I believe World War II, when congregations and churches really felt like they needed to come together and do something. So this offering was created for just such a time as this, to gather what we can and to give, and to let the church spread God's love and grace around this world. If you have a fish box and have been filling that up, keep doing that and we will let you know a way you can drop that off at the church. You can also mail in a check or even stick it in your regular offering envelope. Just put one great hour of sharing in the memo line. So that is one thing you can do. Another thing you can do is to donate blood. There are details in the announcements as well as the newsletter that is coming and Our county has made very special provisions to make sure we can do this safely, and it is a need. Even if you don't get an appointment for a month or more, they want to make sure they do have enough blood for when it is needed. The other thing you can do is just drive by and drop off some extra grocery items in the free little pantry. This is being extensively used in this season as people in our community are already finding that... um, This is changing their lives and what they are able to get, especially those who find that their jobs are paused in this season. With that, LCCM has been sharing that they are already seeing a huge increase in the needs of our community because of this. And so if you are able, I would ask you to consider making a donation straight to LCCM. You can mail a check or their website has a way to give online. Um, These are some things we can do to make a difference in the midst of doing our best to stay home, even as the days get long. There are more announcements for you to take a look at. Those were some things I wanted to share with you. And so as we gather in worship, we remember that we gather around the light of Christ that always shines in the darkest night and in the brightest day. So wherever we are, let us gather our hearts and lift them up to the Lord. Let us pray. Holy God, you greet us with the morning sunrise. You watch over us with the stars at night. You are the light of the world. We ask, O Lord, that your light would draw near to us now, that your light would be scattered across this county and this country and this community, (coughs) that you, O Lord, would gather us in with your spirit. That you, O Lord, would help us to open our hearts, to open our minds, to open our souls. That we would draw near to you 
and that you would draw near to us. In Christ, who is our hope, we pray. Amen. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 130, and for today, may these words be our prayer that lets our hearts pour out our lament and the laments of this world. May God gather in all of our laments. Let us pray together. 
Out of of the the depths depths I cried to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. Let us pray. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. God's mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. People of God, you are hurt. And in Christ, you are brought nearer and nearer to God. So may the peace of Christ that passes all understanding be with you. And I invite you to pass the peace with those who may be in your home or to take your phone and to just text a word of peace to someone who is on your heart. Even in our own space, let us continue to pass the peace of Christ to one another and around this community and the world. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. I hope that in the time that you've had, you've also gotten your phones as Pastor Robin recommended. Because I have a little bit of homework for all of us in this week. This is an incredible time that we live in, and one of the greatest pieces of ministry I have encountered this week has been working with the kids and doing a photo scavenger hunt, where the kids were given a challenge to go out and find a couple different things to take pictures of, to be out with, say, social distancing, and to enjoy what is the beauty of spring as it begins to bloom around us as we see this new life coming out of the ground. And so this week, I would like everyone to take a picture, and it can start today in this moment, but throughout this week, take a picture of something that you find life and hope in. And so in this moment, I'd like to take a selfie with all of you guys. It's going to be a little bit different, and I'll post it and give a little explanation. But uh, so everyone wave. I know I can't see you, but just pretend you're waving at me. Take a moment and find that life. Take a picture of it. And if you're willing to share that picture, please send it into the office to Cliffy or send it to me. And I want to do something with that in a little, in a couple weeks. So please take those pictures, send them in, because it is a great way to share how we are still community as we are our part. Find life in this week. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for how you give us spring in this time that we can look to and see how new life is coming forth all around us. How you breathe into this world, into this creation that is a testament of you. 
I ask that you would open our eyes to things that you are doing around us in new ways and how you are continuing to build and strengthen our community. I praise you and I thank you for all things. In Christ's name, amen. There's a printed prayer of illumination in your bulletin. If you would, join me as we pray for God to illumine our hearts and our minds. Let us pray. God, source, source of all light, light by, by your, your word, give, give light, light to, to our, our lives. lives. Amen. Amen. This morning, the gospel lesson is John chapter 11. And we are going to read verses 1 through 6 and then 17 through 45. So if you have your Bible, please do open and follow along. This will be in the New Testament. Um, I don't have page numbers for you all, but take a moment and find John 11. And as you hear this passage, I invite you to imagine it as if it were almost as if it were a scene you were drawing. And if you are someone who likes to draw, um, I invite you to do that as you hear this story. Also pay attention to um, the words that are spoken aloud between different people within this story. John 11. Listen for God's word that is for us in this day. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, in the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill, so the sisters sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. After having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. As you move down, we'll move to verse 17. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. 
Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were there in the house consoling her saw Mary get up quickly and go out, and they followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping. He was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stone because he's been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! And the dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. And Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sometimes when I start a story and it gets really deep and serious really fast, I need to know if it has a happy ending. Not all stories do, but today remember here that this story 
it has a happy ending. John 11 begins with grim news. The one whom you love is ill. It's one of those messages we hope we never receive. But right now we know that probability is higher than it normally is. I wonder if in this past week some of you have heard such news. Or maybe some of you worry that this is the news that will come every time you hear the phone ring. Now, if you're like me, you would probably prefer not to think about it or talk about it. Yet, today the scripture offers us this story and it says right out loud, these things that are hard to hear. And it reminds us that God is not far from these pivotal moments in life, these pivotal moments of life and of death and of life. This week, the novel coronavirus came closer. For me, it's now one step removed. My college roommate sent out a prayer request for her goddaughter's mother, who tested positive. A Facebook friend posted that he himself tested positive. And I know another who woke with her body aching, and now she waits for a test result. This new virus is starting to affect the health of those we know and maybe even those we love. And so the story of Lazarus, it might just be too appropriate for these days. Maybe it's too close to home right now, and yet this is what the scripture is giving to us. So I'm hoping that today, instead of maybe that desire to sidestep this heart-wrenching story that you will join me as we step into it with our whole hearts and find that Christ is with us right now, but maybe not in the way we expected. In the story, we heard the two sisters each come to Jesus with the same cry, that haunting cry that says, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. It's the same cry that I've heard from loved ones in lifeless hospital rooms. It's the same cry that I yelled in the car the day I heard that my friend had died. It's this cry that comes out of our hearts in the moment where we say, where are you, God? If you had been here, this wouldn't have happened. Now to the first sister, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? To the second sister, he says, where have you laid him? So we find that one gets an answer. These words that we hold on to that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And yet maybe we also admit that sometimes even when we believe it, we still have questions and we wonder, how do we know? Now the other one, the response is action. Jesus goes. He goes to see, and there at the grave of one he loves, Jesus weeps. I can't turn the page. Here we go. We've been going through these different passages in Scripture through Lent that take us into these different kinds of wilderness. We've had the man that was misunderstood and born blind, the woman who is at the well, 
We've had all of these stories that take us to the encounters where Jesus meets another in this difficult or poignant moment. And here, we have the wilderness of grief and sorrow. We have that wilderness of that place we stand when death is right before us. The wilderness of the grave or the tomb. And here in this wilderness, as Jesus stands with Mary and all those who followed her, he also stands with us and all of those we know who stand at the grave and openly weep. Jesus weeps because death takes. He weeps because the world, it wasn't created for this. And he weeps because he loves. N.T. Wright offers us a, a deeper theological lens into this moment. And he writes, The word through whom the worlds were made weeps like a baby at the grave of his friend. Only when we stop and ponder this will we understand the full mystery of John's gospel. Only when we put away our high and dry pictures of who God is and replace them with pictures in which the word who is God can cry. Cry with the world's crying. Only then will we discover what the word God really means. In the moments when we hear the one you love is ill, in the moments when one stands at the grave of a loved one, we don't just need a God of happiness and hope. We need a God who weeps. Once in a while, someone asks me, how they can talk with their friend who lost a loved one and is mad at God. This is one of those professional hazards of being a pastor. I know that they honestly want their friend to know the peace of Christ, but yet they're really far away from it. They don't really know how to bridge that gap. As I listen, it's, it's hard to find words because it's not just words that are needed. Stories like this and moments like this that remind us that we have to get that, past that tendency to share just the happy and hopeful parts of our faith. Too often we see that Christianity gets reduced and watered down by bumper sticker cliches and trite words. I know that's not what we want to do, but sometimes that's what comes out when we don't know the right words to say. But maybe it's not about what we say. Maybe it's about what we do. Jesus asked, where have you laid him? Then he was the one who followed as she said, come and see. And there facing the tomb, Jesus weeps with them. Maybe we need to stand and weep with those who weep before we can really offer any wisdom or any words or any invitation to Christ. Can we stand and weep with those who weep? Knowing that Jesus does that with one he loves right before he calls them out. Remember how I told you the story had a happy ending? It's also a surprise ending. As Jesus stood weeping at that that tomb, he spoke and he said, 
open it. Now they tried to talk him out of it as any rational person would, reminding them of the time that has passed and of the smell. And what in the world are they going to do after they open this tomb? Yet, they do it. They open the tomb and Jesus yells. He yells, Lazarus, come out. Almost as if it's hide and seek and he's saying, okay, we're not going to find you in there. Come out. And Lazarus comes. He comes out bound with these claws around his hands and his face. But he comes. And we see that Jesus revives life in this unexpected and surprising way. What was still moves again. What was gone returns. And all of those heavy hearts that were weeping leap for joy. And the minds marvel at the power of Christ to move death, at the power of Christ to bring life. And so this story that takes us into those moments that we remember grief, when we remember weeping for one we love, this story takes us through that and all the way back out the other side Showing us life again. Also showing us that there is more to come. There is another story that is coming. Another story with women at a tomb. Another story that takes the power away from death. In these days when we long for life and we long for movement, we have to live as those who know that God delights and works to restore life. Ironically, we are doing the best thing we can to preserve life as we stay home, as we stay shut in. In these days, we may wonder, where is God? But maybe God is right there. Maybe God is ready and working to surprise us, even now, to show us how life is and will be revived all around us. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Do you believe this? Jesus is God with us. And God weeps with us. The response to that is thanks be to God. Amen. still my soul the Lord is on thy side bear patiently the cross of grief or pain leave to thy God to order and provide in every Thy best, thy heavenly friend.
Please join with me as we are affirm our faith, reciting the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God, in God the Father, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we consider our offerings today, let us also consider how we can give to God and share with our neighbors. I would remind you that you can mail your offering to the check uh, to the church, or you can also there is a link to give online. If you still have your phone, <laughs> you can also text a gift. You text S A P C and the amount to 73256, and that's also in your announcements. As we consider what we can give to the Lord and what we can share with those around us, let us join together in our prayer of dedication. Ever-present God, with this offering we present also ourselves, all that we have been, all that we are, and all that we shall become, and our resolve to walk in your way. Accept us and our offering, we pray, for Jesus' sake. Amen.
Let us join our hearts in prayer as we lift up all of our prayers to God. O holy God, you are a God who hears us and a God who asks us to pray and to open our hearts. So Lord, we open them and we offer you all of our prayers knowing that you are a God who weeps with those who weeps and who stands with those who stand. And you are here to hold all of our prayers. Today we pray for Bill, who just can't understand why Rosemary isn't able to visit. Pray, O oh Lord, that you would help him to have so much patience. We thank you for Beatrice, who keeps working to keep Bill and Rosemary connected in all sorts of ways. We pray this day for Livy and Seth, who in such a difficult season of life find that they are separated by the quarantine. O oh Lord, may your peace that passes all understanding abide. We pray for all in nursing homes and care facilities who can't have visitors. We pray for those who don't understand and for those who just feel really alone and isolated and for those who may not be getting the same kind of care as they usually do when people come and visit. Lord, hear our prayers for each and every one, the ones we know and the ones we don't, but we know that you do. Today we lift up Kim, who's been through such a risky surgery <coughs> on her brainstem. We pray, O oh Lord, for her, for her mother, we pray, O oh Lord, for healing and things to be knit back together. Pray, O oh Lord, for strength. We pray, O oh Lord, for all of the people of St. Andrews and the families in the world. We pray, O oh Lord, as this pandemic moves into more and more countries. We pray, O oh Lord, for help. We pray, O oh Lord, for you to enter in who created all things and created this world good. And that these things come and destroy and take. We pray for Elaine who is waiting for a test result. Pray, O oh Lord, for Sudish and Sudep and all in the healthcare in New York and all the places where the infection rate keeps jumping up, and we pray for their protection, and we pray that you would use their work to preserve and restore life. Pray, O oh Lord, for those who are grieving. Hear our prayers for Kim and Ken. Let us, O oh Lord, be those who in those moments of deep grief can stand with one another and not try to fix it or put in too many words, but to weep with them. That they would truly know they are not alone. Help us, O oh Lord, as your children, as the children of God, to live in a spirit of peace and trust and not fear and anxiety. Help us to be patient, to wait for you, that you would open our eyes to show us what we can do and how we can lift up others. Help us see, O oh Lord, where you are already working to revive life. 
Help us to seek life and to believe in your power in these days. Hear our prayers of hope and our prayers for healing and our prayers for the season to be over. Hear our prayers, O Lord, for you to come and see and to dwell with us that we might dwell with you right where we are. And so with the confidence of the children of God, we join together all of our hearts and all of our prayers with the words that Jesus came and gave to us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
People of God, you cannot go where God is not. Dwell with God right where you are. Weep with those who weep. And let Jesus surprise you and show you how life is revived. In this week, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. Amen. Thank you.